What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel for another Midnight Club interview with the team behind the show. Congratulations yet again. Thank you. Thank you. I, love, I love, love, love your show. Um, before we get into the details, just a fun question to start here. If you, as in real you, were in the Midnight Club, what would your mug look like and what would be in it? Well, I mean, I'm obsessed with the donut mug that Ruth had. That's the best. I have one of those at home now. Um, that's the best mug. But I think in reality, my mug would be something super nerdy. I would try to find something that had like a video game controller for a handle or something like that, or just be a skull. So. I have an actual huge mug collection. So the ones that I rotate on regular, one is a mermaid one, uh, one is a Doctor Who one, one is a Bob Fosse one. Nice. <laughs> and the other one is uh, a thing that came in my baby's play kit that says uh, the days are long, but the years are short. Very good. That's <laughs> great. Uh, that's hard to top. I think mine would be mine. Is, I have a hand thrown mug that my cousin made. That would probably be the one. Um, and odds are I would need some whiskey. That's fair enough. I feel like that's very appropriate for fireside storytelling. Um, I am obsessed with the Flana family and the environment that you create on set. In addition to just pure talent with the people that you're working with, what else do you need to see in a collaborator to know that this person is going to be a good addition to our family? Um, that's a great question. You know, it's so many different weird things. I, I think we look very much for someone who is having as much fun as we are. That's really important. You know, it's, it's a job, but I think we recognize people who are there, kind of grown up kids like we are. Um, and so that that becomes really important. I think. There's also a certain degree of I mean, they're like they want you want them. You want to be able to have a beer with them. You want to enjoy working with them. But there's also a kind of fit thing, because especially when Mike's directing, there's a specificity to the way we plan. And it some some actors do better with that than others. Some amazing actors probably wouldn't be a great fit because you know, Mike's like a three take director for the most part. And if you're not like coming prepared, you know, and, and ready, it tends not to work so well with the way that we plan our shoots. You want to add anything? Um, I like being a part of this family. <laughs> Thanks for having me guys. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, all right, I have to wind out with you guys soon because you have somewhere to go, a very special panel to have tonight. So I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna put up the spoiler warning for anybody out there who has not watched all of the Midnight Club. This is where you push pause, you go binge it, and then you come back and push play and it will start right here. All right, first question I wanted to ask and let you guys talk about freely is, which, uh, which scene in the show changed the most from script to screen? Oh, wow. That's a great question. That's a terrific question. Um, script to screen. Uh, we were pretty good about shooting the scripts on this one. I think we did a pretty good job. But I do know that episode seven, Anya, um, there's a lot in there, especially in uh, the town square where she's walking by all the shops and things like that, um, that initially on the page got crazy. We had stunts, people flying through the plate glass. Do you remember that? Yeah. Like. <laughs> We had all sorts of this kind of explosion of action and I, like the car crash from a five came back that turned out to be more than we could kind of deliver. So we, we found a simpler version of it. But I think that's the one that probably changed the most for the the most part that we were pretty. Wise, yeah, I mean, yeah. that one we were like, let's just go for it and yeah. see what we can get. So we kind of knew that things would probably change a little bit. But yeah, I, I really love that episode. It's quite effective as is. I love it. Um, I have to talk about the very ending, I guess. Heather came in earlier and she was telling me that she didn't find out about Dr. Stanton's real identity until like a little while into the shoot. So at what point did you all figure out that that's where her path was heading? Oh, we had that in the writer's room. Um, we didn't tell Heather initially. She was more interested in talking about the early parts of the season. And I wanted to kind of make sure that her baseline on Stanton was done before we got into stuff like that. You don't want to have that kind of change the way she'd approach a scene. Um, but yeah, that, that was one of the big twists we were excited about. Okay. I, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but are, are you willing to each share your interpretation of what she is after? Because the other thing I was talking about with Heather, and I explained to you before we even started recording, was that interpretations can be different. That's very exciting. And that's a big part of the reason why your shows in general often stay on my mind well after watching it. But, you know, you could have a different feeling depending on what day, day you're having. So 
Are you in a, a positive Stanton day or a nefarious Stanton day? Oh, the, the, the beauty of it is, is I think both of those can survive easily into the second season. And if we get a second season, I don't want to spoil that because yeah, we, 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 have the answer already. we have a great answer that we're ready to show. If we don't get a second season, we are going to put it all over Twitter and oh, everybody man, will be able to so see what we had in mind. <laughs> I really like the sound of that. I want to know, but I'd rather you get a second season. Oh, so us too, big time. time. To but we, we don't want to leave people hanging. Well, was it a different thought process for you this time around? Just because those other shows were very strictly like one and done, this time around, was it a completely different type of collaboration with Netflix because you knew you wanted to keep going? This is the first time we've ever designed anything to be ongoing, and it's strange. It's a whole new vibe because you want the season to wrap up and be satisfying but you need to leave enough on the field that people might want to come back. So that negotiation is tricky. And you know, usually we're done with the show, we can talk about it, it's in the past. With this one, we have no idea if it's gonna come back or if we're gonna be doing more. So it's all very kind of suspenseful for us. We get to experience the tension for a change, yeah. it's fun. So hopefully we were able to like have some nice emotional arcs that you know fulfill themselves, but then you know, mythological stuff, that's all, yeah, we will have to wait. I'll ask you one last question that you probably won't answer, but would season two of The Midnight Club take place immediately after the events of season one, or will there be some sort of time jump? There would not be much of a time jump. Okay. Um, for a lot of our characters, they don't have too much time for us to burn, so we would be coming in relatively relatively tight, I think, to where we left off. I didn't have the heart to ask if it was going to be a new cast, and that's why I phrased it there, another way. But that's the thing, though, about this show, is if it does continue, um, there will have to be a new cast, and they'll have to kind of come in one at a time as people go. Yeah, you hear them yeah. in the show say how long they've been there, so the yeah. timetable yeah. kind of writes that's itself. so much. Con like extra special congratulations to all of you on finding that ensemble and your casting directors too. That is an exceptional group of young stars you have and I can't wait to see more from them and all of you as well. Thank you for swinging by and congratulations on the Midnight Club. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Thank you so much.